I'm Sarah Idu, and you're watching Brockton Community Access. That's true news coming to you. On Monday, May 25th, a four-step plan was set to help get Brockton back to regular life. In phase one, local barbershops, hair salons, parks, and playgrounds were able to open. Since the opening of some establishments, there's been a decline in cases in Brockton, Massachusetts. Although establishments are beginning to open, it is still important that we follow all the guidelines given by the CDC. As we all know, it is very important that we all wear a mask while in public and to also stay six feet away from others at all times. It is also very important to sanitize and wash hands as often as possible. Many local hospitals, including Brockton Neighborhood Health Center, are continuously doing on-spot COVID-19 testing. We um, began preparing for recovery uh, in the weeks leading up to May 18th, and then again, almost immediately preparing for phase two, which we expect to come on Monday the 8th. And the goal of our recovery planning has been creating an environment and communication with our patients that identifies the importance of them of seeking appropriate medical care and making it safe for them to do so. And I think it's important for the community to hear both parts of that. Uh, it's very interesting talking to physicians in the medical group and over at the hospital and um, see what they're experiencing as people have delayed necessary care out of fear of COVID. And now that that crisis has passed and we're into recovery, helping people re-engage and get their healthcare needs met. Huge drop off of patients coming to the hospital for cardiac care, including chest pain. And they think people were staying home who were actually having heart attacks. He's now seeing patients coming to the hospital with heart failure that was a direct result of a heart attack a few weeks ago that the person never came to the emergency room. And then we talked to our oncologists and see the number of patients who have put off screening for cancer. Um, and so how many cancers have we not detected in the last few months um, that pose a risk to the patients? Mm -hmm. um, and there are all sorts, of, every specialty has a little story about patients who are having adverse health outcomes because of the delays of, of necessary care. So we focused on a few critical areas to make sure we're first fully compliant with the state, mm -hmm. fully safe, and then do so in a way that helps our patients as well as our employees and our doctors feel confident. So. We have attested successfully every week since May 18th that we have closed our surge ICU. We have a surge ICU ready if we need it, but our ICU census is now well back into normal range. Our extra COVID med surge unit is now starting to return to normal because our hospital census for COVID has dropped uh, by a factor of four over the last month or so. So uh, our um, population in the hospital this COVID right now is quite small. They're isolated, they're protected, they get the care they need, but it allows us to treat non-COVID patients safely in a separate um, area. And we attest that we have enough personal protective equipment um, as well as testing capability. So we tell the state every week that, you know, that we're okay there. And then we start building all of the um, safety elements, um, some of which are unfolding, some of which are very firmly um, in place. So the first one is screening. Everybody who enters any building in Signature Healthcare is screened whether it's the hospital, a clinic, the business office, it doesn't matter. Everyone gets a temperature, everyone has to attest that they have symptoms or do not have symptoms, and everyone must wear a mask. Whether you're an employee or the CEO or a patient, those rules apply every single place you go in our system. We are restricting visitors um, with certain exceptions, 
uh, that we clearly uh, put on our website and our signage. Again, just reducing uh, crowding and foot traffic. Um, once you get past the screening, what you'll see across our system are cues for social distancing. Um, and that includes um, elevator restrictions, waiting room restrictions. Uh, our waiting rooms look weird because there aren't many chairs in them anymore. And they're all six feet apart from each other. Um, we have um, decals on the floor everywhere you go telling you where to stand to enforce social distancing. And there's hand sanitizer stations everywhere you look to. So we want our patient to have a mask, have no symptoms, have no temperature, stay socially distant, and be able to sanitize their hands um, all the way through their experience. Um, and that helps keep them safe. You'll see that we have plexiglass barriers all over the place to help both employees and patients feel safe that when they do have to get a little closer to someone, that there's a, a barrier between them at all times. Um, and then what we've done is altered the flow of how patients move through the system to minimize any need for lines, waiting, or crowding. Um, some of that has been by restricting the number of patients we'll let our physicians see in a day. Um, and we're supporting that by doing a lot of telehealth. Um, right now, our clinics can only see 25% normal in person, and everything else they do must be by telehealth. And we will gradually increase that in the coming weeks as long as things remain safe. So that allows us most of the time to have a patient come and go almost literally from their car to the exam room, see the provider, and then go back. Um, that's very true in Brockton Hospital where we have started a small number of elective operations based on clinical urgency. And the patient can literally go from the car and be escorted right into the pre-op holding area where they can then change, get their IV, meet the anesthesiologist and so forth. It keeps them from lining up at a check-in or registration site or having to sit in a waiting room until they're called. And we think that really um, helps with safety. And then the final thing we've done at this point is, um, really brought in extra people to make sure that we are cleaning at a very high frequency, all surfaces, disinfecting in kind of this continuous manner. So as you come through the organization, you see people, you know, wiping down surfaces and elevator buttons and banisters. And, and obviously we always cleaned our environment. So we want to make sure we're accounting for all of those, um, elements um, uh, as people come back and experience um, healthcare. <clears throat> so we're also looking at, um, you know, innovative ways uh, of providing care um, in the future and kind of moving through those and implementing them as, as we can. Some of it, which we've already done, like telehealth, which has been well received by our patients, we've identified a lot of different types of situations where telehealth is essentially as good as an in-person visit and it works well for the patient and for the doctor and, and be in contact with. But telehealth has been, I think, a great tool during this time and we will continue to use it going forward. Now we're looking at um, technology that helps us coordinate the visit with the patient via text so as they arrive to an appointment, we can guide them through um, the process to, again, to avoid waiting unnecessarily in public spaces. So a patient may get it, be asked to text us as they pull into the parking lot and we can text them back, we need you to stay in your car for a few minutes um, so that when we ask you to come into the building, you're confident you can go straight through and not have to get, you know, put into a waiting room. So those things are kind of un unfolding. Um, some of this we may get into kiosks that allow for patient registration, co-payment, um, either 
from home before the visit, like checking in for a flight again to try um, to create a more efficient experience with less waiting for our patients. Um, any kind of health concern, fever, symptom, um, you know, contact your primary care physician and, and seek medical treatment and be confident that it's safe for you to seek medical care. Who's tighter than the other? Yeah, it's really important for everyone in our community uh, to follow the rules that are coming out, you know, um, from the health authorities, from the mayor's office and, and local government, paying particular attention to, you know, face coverings when in public, mm -hmm. not avoiding unnecessary contact if you're older or have significant health conditions. Um, and as, um, you know, the community opens up again and people do more, you still have to be aware um, and limit crowding, still use your face covering, um, and uh, just be generally aware of the risk as you start to do more um, and go out more. With the Four-Step Plan and Act, there is hope that the end of COVID-19 is near. With the Four-Step Plan and Act, there is hope that the end of COVID-19 is near. In order to ensure the complete end and spread of COVID-19, it is crucial that we continue to follow the guidelines given by the CDC, mayor, and other health officials. I'm Sarah Idu, and you're watching Brockton Community Access. Thank <music> you.